Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so as promised in a previous video, actually yesterday's video, or the day before yesterday, the video that we did about Dark Knight's Metal and the Multiverse and all that, I promised you guys that I would make a video about the Overvoid, the Overmonitor, all that kind of stuff. Something to understand going into this, though, is that all of this is largely speculation. When Grant Morrison created the Overvoid, he didn't really hold our hand and walk us through it and say, this is the nature of the thing. That's the reason why you see so many people out there who more or less speculate on what the Overvoid is. But I think this is going to give us a pretty solid understanding going forward until such a time as somebody like Grant Morrison comes along and basically offers some explanation to this. It's one of the biggest issues that DC struggled with over the course of their entire publication history is effectively organizing and consolidating their greater cosmology, right? It's just kind of a thing that's there and sometimes somebody references it. So the overvoid at its core represents effectively imagination. And that's why it's described as kind of like this infinite white sheet of paper, more or less, and that on this singular you know, this, this giant white sheet of paper, there's this singular tiny spot that represents like everything in DC Comics. In the grand scheme of the imagination of what we can all achieve, DC Comics is virtually nothing. Let, let's kind of take this back, right? Because this is easier to understand if we look at it in, the, in, in terms of levels, right? From like a singular universe running up to a multiverse, to the omniverse, to the overvoid. Taking things back way, way, way back, all the way to like Action Comics number one, we had the introduction of Superman. Following Superman, we had a whole huge explosion of superheroes in terms of like Hawkman and like the Spectre and Batman and so on and so forth. And the way this worked is that you had all these different superheroes operating in what eventually became known as Earth One. And we knew that it was Earth One for a couple different reasons. The first reason comes in the form of Batman and Superman crossing over for the first time. And that basically solidified that all the superheroes that we saw DC publishing at that point in time existed on the same Earth. Up until that point, it was like the difference between like Daredevil on Netflix and the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, right? They may or may not exist in the same place, we're never really given a definitive answer. But when Superman and Batman crossed over, it was DC saying Batman's in Gotham, Superman's in Metropolis, and each one can travel to the other's location. They both exist on the same world. Now, the, the actual indication of this having a numerical designation, which is to say the idea of DC calling this Earth One didn't come along until we got Flash of Two Worlds, right? The Flash of Two Earths storyline. And that was basically when DC created the multiverse. And this was important because superheroes started dropping off in popularity in the mid-1940s. And then in the early 1950s, Julius Schwartz asked the question, what would happen if we took the origin of a superhero and we tied it into science fiction and then we gave this kind, kind of science fiction-based superhero? And that was the introduction of Barry Allen the Flash, a guy who was doused by chemicals, struck by lightning, and became the Flash. Uh, he took the place of, of Jay Garrick as the Flash who had been canceled some number of years prior. The problem with this is that DC did not explain where Jay Garrick went. He was simply just canceled one day and you never got an answer, right? So for those of you guys coming from Marvel Comics, it would be like if Carol Danvers simply just disappeared one day and then you got a new Captain Marvel in her stead, right? You was never given an answer to where Carol Danvers went. The result of this is that in order for DC to satisfy fan interest and to also provide some measure of continuity in terms of why things have changed and offering an explanation to it, the Flash of Two Worlds story was introduced as a way of saying all the superheroes that we saw operating during the time that DC was publishing comics in World War II, they all came from a universe called Earth 2. All the superheroes that you saw basically operating at that point in time in the 1950s was Earth 1. To make this simpler, any time you saw comics published at the time when Jay Garrick was a superhero, that was all Earth 2. And when Barry Allen became the Flash, everything after that was all Earth 1. Following that, DC created like this great big huge multiverse. You got Earth 3, which was the crime syndicate of America, where basically all the traditional superheroes were actually super villains, different things along those lines. But the long and short of this is that DC's multiverse became wildly chaotic and it was very, very difficult to keep up with what was happening or to even get into comics at that point in time if you were somebody new who had never read comics before. And so in order to fix all of this, DC launched the Crisis on Infinite Earths event, which basically wiped out the entirety of the multiverse. And in its place, what you got was simply New Earth. There was no multiverse anymore. There was just one singular universe and that was basically it. New origins were given that basically fell in line with the idea that there was only ever one universe. There were a few outliers, a couple characters whose origins didn't really make sense. And that's why you got future crises 
these events, right? Zero hour crisis on time, infinite crisis, final crisis, trying to rec uh, reconcile all that stuff, right? To basically correct the errors that came after the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths. But with the idea of, of there simply being a new Earth, you got stuff like hypertime. That's not really important for this discussion. But Infinite Crisis basically saw the multiverse coming back. And it wasn't until the events of Final Crisis that the superheroes became aware of the fact that the multiverse had returned. But ever since the events of Infinite Crisis, the multiverse has been back, right? It's, it's basically been there as a mainstay in DC Comics. Now, the reason why this matters and the reason why I offered you that explanation is one, so you can have a better understanding of what's going on in terms of uh, Dark Knight's Metal and like the idea of the original Crisis event versus Infinite Crisis versus Final Crisis and kind of understand how all those two, all those things tie together. But the other reason why I told you this is because thinking of the Overvoid insofar as going from like a hierarchy of a universe to the Omniverse, it basically goes like this. So what you have is you have a singular universe and inside this singular universe in DC Comics, you have the Green Lantern Corps and you have Batman and you have Superman and Wonder Woman and all that kind of stuff, right? We can use Earth Zero or Earth Prime as it's called in DC Comics, which is what the numerical designation for the main DC universe is after the events of New 52. We can call that a singular universe, right? Now, beyond that, you have basically an infinite number of universes. DC only focuses on 52 because for whatever reason, DC loves that number, right? We don't really know why, they just do. They love the number 52, right? So whenever you hear about DC, whenever you're reading a comic and it says, well, there's only 52 universes that we know of, it's because only 52 have been explored up to that point. There's an actual infinite number of universes out there. We just haven't really seen any others besides those 52. But the idea here is that beyond this singular universe, we have a multiverse, right? A giant combination of universes that exist out there. And for the most part, the multiverse is largely considered to be infinite because there are an infinite number of universes. But beyond that multiverse, we then have what's called the Omniverse. And the Omniverse is basically a collection of multiverses. DC Comics has its own multiverse. And then you might have like the Twilight Zone. And if we looked at the TV show Twilight Zone, each story is largely self-contained. And you can even go as far as to say each story is actually its own universe. Within the Twilight Zone, you have their multiverse. And then if you go and you look at Marvel Comics, Marvel Comics has their whole multiverse. All these different multiverses from across every single method of publishing, right? Everything from books like Moby Dick to uh, Treasure Island, all the way up to like TV shows like Black Mirror on Netflix, or even things that have nothing to do with comic books, which is something like Alice in Wonderland, right? All of these have their own universes, right? They have their own, their own multiverses. And so the Omniverse is a collection of every single universe or multiverse that exists out there. Because sometimes you have things like Alice in Wonderland, which doesn't have a multiverse, right? It's just a singular story told in a linear way from beginning to end. And there's no alternate realities to explore there, right? I mean, I guess the possibility exists, like what would have happened if Alice didn't go down the rabbit hole? Or what would have happened if Alice uh, had like killed the Red Queen, you know, so like the Queen of Hearts somewhere along the line or something crazy, but it doesn't really matter. The whole point of this is that beyond this multiverse and beyond this omniverse, you have the Overvoid. And that's why the Overvoid is described as this giant white sheet of paper and the DC multiverse is just the singular speck on it. Because in the grand scheme of imagination and all possible creation, the DC multiverse is just this tiny itty bitty thing. Now there's a litany of other things that are on here, right? Everything that we as human beings could possibly create is part of this Overvoid. And so that's, that's the important thing to understand is that while the Overvoid basically represents the idea of what we as human beings can make, in the context that it was given, Grant Morrison only focused on the multiverse. Now, why it was represented as a singular white sheet and why it wasn't just simply a whole bunch of squares that have like everything that we've ever created just kind of trailing on to the point where it basically goes out of uh, goes out of panel, I don't really know, right? I have no real idea. Another theory that comes with the Overvoid and the Overmonitor is that it only is contained to DC Comics, right? It's, it doesn't represent anything in relation to anything outside of DC Comics. Now, the reason why it's called the Overvoid and the reason why it is just a giant white sheet of paper with the DC multiverse just kind of existing there is because in relation to everything that's been created in DC versus everything that could be created in DC Comics, the multiverse is virtually nothing, right? Because the imagination of us as people is limitless. And so you have something like Scott Snyder's Batman run, which is virtually nothing compared to all the things Scott Snyder could imagine doing in DC Comics, right? Jeff John's Green Lantern run is nothing in comparison to all the things Jeff John's could possibly do or across all of DC Comics. That everything outside of that singular multiversal spec on the Overvoid is basically everything DC hasn't done yet, right? That's essentially what it is, right? So again, it's kind of Grant Morrison making an intangible concept tangible, right? That's basically what it is, right? That the Overvoid represents what DC could imagine doing over the course of their entire publication history, every story that could make in the future, and then that little tiny 
expect being everything that they've done so far, right? So it's kind of a crazy thing. It's a little bit wild, a little bit bonkers. But again, that's kind of what you run into when you're when you're talking about Grant Morrison, right? That's why you kind of have a lot of fans who are split on him. You know, you have like super hardcore Grant Morrison fans who are like, you simply don't understand him, even though they're largely saying that, not understanding him. Or you have people like me who look at Grant Morrison and just say, you make things more complicated than they need to be. Just tell the story and let's call it a day, right? That's kind of, that's kind of my thing. <laughs> You know, when I read comics, sometimes I like to think, sometimes I don't. And there are times when I really enjoy reading comics where I'm basically just kind of scrolling through the pages and not giving any real thought to what's happening, enjoying the madness unfolding, right? Like I just, I kind of enjoy that sometimes. So hopefully this cleared things up for you guys. Uh, hopefully it, it, it basically made sense of what the over monitor or over void is. It's just total imagination in DC comics, right? All the white space there is everything that DC has not done yet. And it represents the potential of what they could do. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to comics, explain make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the rob core if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you drop a like and i will catch you all later peace